I'd like to step you through some typical stoichiometry problems, giving examples whenever I can, so that you see how you can do all these conversions. Stoichiometry is basically a matter of conversions. You're converting moles of one substance to moles of another, and you're converting between grams and moles of single substances. So when you're converting moles to moles, this is using a specific reaction equation. The coefficients in the reaction equation tell you the number of molecules in the smallest unit reaction. The proportions between the different components are going to be the same no matter how many molecules are reacting. The mole ratios of the reactants and the products are the same as the molecule ratios. So here's the example reaction that I'm going to use in all of these cases. This is the combustion reaction of ethane with oxygen. So two molecules of ethane, C2H6, reacts with seven molecules of oxygen to create four moles of carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and six moles of water, H2O. So those are the molecular ratios, two to seven to four to six. Those are also the molar ratios. So let's first do an example if we specify how much ethane we have to start. So if we start with 4.7 moles of ethane, burn it with oxygen, how many moles of oxygen are going to be equivalent to those 4.7 moles of ethane? Well, we start with 4.7 moles of ethane, and we see that the equivalence in this reaction is that there's seven moles of oxygen for every two moles of ethane. So that's the conversion factor we can use when we see we do that, the moles of ethane are going to cancel out, and we're left with moles of oxygen. The numbers are the 4.70 times 7 over 2. That ends up giving us that 16.5 moles of oxygen reacts with 4.7 moles of ethane. Now instead of how much oxygen is consumed, we'll ask how much product is created. In this case, we'll ask how much of the product carbon dioxide is created. We start the same way, 4.7 moles of C2H6. Now the conversions that we have are going to be between the moles of carbon dioxide and the moles of ethane. There's four moles of carbon dioxide for every two moles of ethane. The moles of ethane cancel out, and we're left with 4.7 times four halves, or 4.7 times two moles of CO2, which gives us that there are 9.4 moles of CO2 created when 4.7 moles of ethane burn. Finishing it out, how many moles of water are created? We see that there are six moles of water created for every two moles of ethane that burn. The moles of ethane cancel out, and we're left with 14.1 moles of water are created when 4.7 moles of ethane burns. Now, we'll ask a slightly different question. Instead of starting from the reactants, we'll aim toward the products. Let's say we want to produce a certain amount of carbon dioxide from this. Specifically, uh, we'll ask how much ethane we need, and then later we'll answer how much oxygen we need if we want the product to be 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide. So we start with 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide, and then we're going to see how much ethane we need. We have two moles of ethane for every four moles of carbon dioxide. Moles of carbon dioxide cancel out, and we see that it requires 0.125 moles of ethane to make 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide. Now we'll do the same analysis for oxygen. So we'll start again with our calculation with our 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide that we end up with, but now that there is a 4 to 7 ratio of carbon dioxide to oxygen, or I should say 7 to 4 of oxygen to carbon dioxide. When we're done with those calculations, we see that 0.438 moles of oxygen is required to make 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide. Well, that was very simple, converting moles to moles. We can't measure moles directly in the laboratory. What we can measure directly is mass. For that conversion between mass and moles, we need to know what the mass of one mole is, which is the formula mass or the molar mass of the substance. So masses are proportional to each other in reactions, but the reaction equation only tells us the mole ratios, not the mass ratios. So if we want to know how much mass of one substance it takes to react with another substance, we have to first 
convert the mass of one substance to moles. From that, find the moles of the other substance. And then, from there, find the mass of the other substance. So you have to convert mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to mass. Back to our combustion of ethane example. Ethane burns with oxygen. How many grams of oxygen do we need to consume 10 grams of ethane? So we start with 10 grams of ethane. How many moles is that? Well, one mole of ethane is 30.07 grams of ethane. The grams of ethane cancel out, and we'll be left with moles of ethane. That's not what we need. We need from moles of ethane to find moles of oxygen, so we have to do the conversion like we just did in the earlier examples. Uh, there are seven moles of oxygen required for every two moles of ethane. The moles of ethane are going to cancel. Now we'll be left with moles of oxygen, so 1.16 moles of oxygen. Now we need to convert that to grams of oxygen. So for that we need the molar mass of oxygen, 31.999 grams of oxygen for every mole. The moles cancel, and we're left with 37.2 grams of oxygen required to consume 10 grams of ethane. Now we'll ask how much starting material it takes to make a set amount of product. In this case, we want to produce one kilogram of carbon dioxide. For instance, perhaps we're worrying about a global warming calculation. So we'll begin our calculation with the 1,000 grams of carbon dioxide. And we want to find the equivalent amount of ethane to that 1,000 grams of carbon dioxide. So first, we have to find out how many moles of carbon dioxide this is. So we have the one mole of carbon dioxide divided by its molar mass, 44.009 grams. Grams of carbon dioxide cancel out. We now see that one kilogram of carbon dioxide is 22.72 moles of carbon dioxide. Now we have to convert that to moles of ethane. There are two moles of ethane required to make four moles of carbon dioxide. That tells us that we need 11.36 moles of ethane to produce one kilogram of carbon dioxide. Last step is to find the mass of ethane, 30.07 grams. Moles of ethane cancel. We'll be left with grams of ethane, which is what we want. We see that it takes 341.6 grams of ethane to burn to create one kilogram of carbon dioxide. We can also be interested in the limiting reagents in reactions. So this happens when reactants are not present in equivalent molar amounts. So when that happens, one of them is going to run out before the other one does. That's the limiting reaction. That's the limiting reagent. The reagents that are still present when the limiting reagent is consumed are known as in excess reagents. They're the excess reagents. When you're done, the amount of excess reagents that are consumed are going to be proportional to the moles of limiting reagent that were there, and the moles of product that are created are going to be proportional to the moles of limiting reagent that were present. However much excess reagent you have doesn't matter. If you don't have a limiting reagent, you're not going to produce the product. Using the same reaction again, going to combine 5 moles of ethane and 10 moles of oxygen, and we find which one is limiting. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Here we'll start with the first one, the ethane. So 5 moles of ethane. What's the equivalent molar amount of oxygen? Well, we know that there are 7 moles of oxygen for every 2 moles of ethane, so we'll use that as our conversion factor. Moles of ethane cancel out, and we find that the equivalent amount of oxygen is 17.5 moles. Now here we see that we need 17.5 moles, yet only 10 moles are present. So that means there's not enough oxygen to react with all of the ethane. So that means that there's not enough oxygen to react with all of the ethane, and oxygen is the limiting reagent. So Using those same numbers, 5 moles of ethane, 10 moles of oxygen, we know that the oxygen is limiting. So how many moles of C2H6 are going to react? Well, 
Since oxygen is limiting, we start with oxygen to find the proportions of everything else. So 10 moles of oxygen. Now there's 2 moles of C2H6 for every 10 moles of oxygen. So that gives us 2.86 moles of ethane are going to react. And the remaining amount, so that's only a little bit more than half of what was there, the 5 moles that were there to begin with. Same situation again, 5 moles of C2H6, 10 moles of oxygen. We know that oxygen is limiting. So how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced? Again, that's going to be based on the moles of oxygen that were present to begin with. So we have 10 moles of oxygen, and now our, real, now our proportion is 4 moles of CO2 for every 7 moles of O2. So that's our conversion factor. The moles of O2 cancel out. We're left with moles of CO2, and we get 5.71 moles of CO2 are produced when 10 moles of oxygen uh, are consumed by combusting ethane. So this tells us that 5.71 moles of CO2 are produced when excess ethane is combusted in the presence of 10 moles of oxygen. Now we'll ask from a different side, instead of giving moles to begin with, we'll start with masses. Because remember, masses are what we most commonly encounter in the lab. Masses are what we can measure with a balance. Moles we have to calculate. So now we'll say we have 5 grams of ethane and 20 grams of oxygen. Let's see which one is limiting now. We can start with the first one, ethane. See how much oxygen is required to react with 5 grams of ethane and see if the 20 grams that we have is more or less. If it's more, then oxygen is in excess. If it's less, then oxygen is limiting. So first, we convert ethane to its, uh, first we convert grams of ethane to moles of ethane, so 0.166 moles of ethane. Then we have to convert that to moles of oxygen, so there's 7 oxygen for every 2 moles of ethane. And then we find that we need 0.582 moles of oxygen to react with that 5 grams of ethane. Well, how many grams of oxygen is that? For that, we need to use the molar mass of oxygen. So the moles of oxygen are going to cancel out. And we're left with mass of oxygen. And here we see that we need 18.6 grams of oxygen. That's less than the 20 grams that we have. So oxygen is present in slight excess. The methane is, excuse me, the ethane is limiting. 